March of 1770, riot breaks out in King Street in Boston, and it leaves five colonists dead, about a dozen others injured. And this is the biggest public relations crisis of the period. Samuel Adams is really a master at manipulating news. And he convenes the Boston town meeting, they hear witnesses, and the town of Boston publishes its account, a short account of the horrid massacre perpetrated by soldiers of His Majesty's 29th Regiment. You know, that title, short account, horrid massacre. And it's coupled with Paul Revere's engraving of the scene that shows these people dead. It shows the British troops standing in a straight formation firing at this unarmed crowd isn't exactly the way things happened. In Revere's engraving, you see guns firing from the custom house, and that's the focus. The customs agents are really what triggered this, and the Boston account begins at the custom house, begins with the arrival of the customs agents in 1767. That's where the trouble started. And Revere has the guns firing out, and one of the witness, some of the witnesses reported seeing guns firing out of the customs house. And one of our newspapers has a servant who works at the customs house reporting that he was forced to go into the customs house by his master and told to fire out or he would be killed. And he reports in great detail what was happening inside. So if you're reading this newspaper in 1770, you're thinking, wow, the customs agents are firing out of the customs house at this unarmed crowd. And then you see the Revere engraving where you have the soldiers in a straight line and the gun firing from the customs house. Seems pretty clear what's happening here. It is an attack, an attack on unarmed citizens, not only by the soldiers, but by the forces of the empire, the customs collectors. Now, another version of this is printed in England, you know, shortly after it happened. The Boston group, by the way, is printing this up to get it to England as quickly as possible because they know they have to mobilize opinion there to get British public opinion on our side. Meanwhile, another account is published in London in um, April or May of 1770 that calls it a short narrative of the, of the late unhappy disturbance on King Street. Yeah, it's an unhappy disturbance, which is much different from a horrid massacre. And here it says the real trouble began on the Friday morning before when there was a fight broke out at one of the rope walks between a soldier and some rope workers. And this you know, heightens tensions. The Boston account, the horrid massacre, says that there had been a boxing match on Friday morning. And the soldier who got lost the boxing match then retaliated. And the soldiers were really sore. But the real problem were the customs agents, you know, the the short account, the English account, says, well, actually, there is a fight that breaks out between soldiers and rope workers, and they were fighting each other, and this turns into a riot. Very different perceptions. At the trial of the soldiers in the fall of 1770, one of the judges talks about how misinformed the public is, and he talks about these copper plate engravings and these sensational accounts people have read in the press that have really changed, given them a the wrong impression about what really happened. What really happened was a riot and that these soldiers were under attack. So this is the great public relations crisis at the time as we have Samuel Adams and others using this as an opportunity to try to force the British out and force the British soldiers out of town as a way of you know, showing their primacy, their ability to control events. And then we have Governor Hutchinson who you know, you needed the soldiers here because Boston is a lawless town. Or going, you know, he, Hutchinson's house had been destroyed five years earlier, so he knows what will happen in Boston. So the massacre really is a great, one of the first great public relations crises, and we have to say that since the Revere engraving is probably the best known image of the American contemporary image of the American Revolution, we have to say that the Samuel Adams and Paul Revere side won through their ability to manipulate the press or their ability to get their story into the press.